I drew this Paris street scene for a recent video on changing the scale of our reference, drawing it larger but keeping the proportions correct. I thought I'd make a video of applying the tone to it and creating a variation in values that enhances our ability to see, take in, understand the scene. However, first I'm going to use some of this low adhesive tape just to mask our border and to get a nice straight edge. And just off camera, I have my Copic Neutral Grey colour chart that I've made, which helps me make an easier, faster and more accurate choice as to which value I want to use as I apply the tone. Probably the tone I'll use in this scene will range from N0 to N5, although there may just be one or two N6 highlights. We'll see how it goes because we can't really decide value. We can't really decide the tonal values that we apply until we start to see them in place because we read them off each other. So in a way, we have to apply all of them all at once. I like to start fairly conservatively and then make adjustments as I start to see the effect that the various values have against each other. But generally, we want to try and have some parts of our drawing where we have high contrast in values because they make it both easier to see that certain spot and to read it, to understand it. But they also create a sense of visual drama, which is, I think, always a good thing in these drawings. We also want to keep it loose and not be overly fussed with exact shadows and, and edges and so forth because the line work here is fairly loose. So we want the application of tone to match the line work. And we also want to try and avoid too many mid-tones that are very similar to each other being too closely together in our drawing because they create a flattening, deadening feel to our artwork. So with those general principles and guidelines in place, let's start and I will start with my lightest tone the N0. So I'm starting with my N0, my lightest value of the neutral grey Copic sketch marker pen. And I'm really just going over the whole surface of this building on the left, which relatively is going to be a lighter area. And I often like to just do the whole area in the lightest value that's going to be applied to it. So from memory, I then get a 0 0.1 and I put some of it on the side of the church just to see how it looks and to get something a bit darker than the building to the left because we do need to have a contrast between the church and the apartment on the left. Now I know I'm not going to leave any of this in one but it's a way of starting, a way of getting a base tone that I can then start to make adjustments to. And on this building on the left, you can see I'm actually applying it to the entire front of the building, except for the shutters of the windows on the upper floors. And I find this gives me a nice even effect to do it this way. From there, I get an N2 and I do some of these shaded areas under the cornices and so I start to bring out a little of the three-dimensionality of the front of this building by highlighting the shadows more strongly and as well as doing that I now apply this N2 to the side of the church because again I know that all of the church is going to be at least this N2 color. In fact it ends up being a one or two shades darker. I'm really just playing over it and getting a sense, starting to make a few marks that might indicate brickwork. So now i am got my N1 again just to put some tone on the roof. 
which I do want to keep light. And I've picked up an N3 and I'm putting some darker tone now on the building on the left. And now something darker again, an N4 on the side of the church. Now I'm fairly confident that the whole side of this building is pretty much going to be N4. But I'm trying to apply it so it doesn't look too neat because it is a fairly patchy effect on the side of the church because of the different uh, blocks of stone weathering slightly in different ways. This is the N4, that was an N3, sorry. I've used the N4 to darken the window of the church and getting some of the really darker shadows and staining on some of the blocks with this N4. I feel like in the Copic brand, there's quite a jump from N3 to N4. And that perspective angle of the line with the balcony on it there doesn't look like it's quite right, does it? It should be tilted up a little bit higher. Can't do anything about that now. And so with my N4, I'm darkening this downpipe. And now some more N4 on the side of the church and really establishing some quite dark values there. No, Ash, I think this is N3 again. Sorry about that. It can be a bit, a bit hard to tell. I should put colored tape on the markers so that I know, shouldn't I? And that you know as well. I certainly want to keep the buildings that are further away very light and the furthest building stays N0 throughout. Look, I'm putting N3 up here, fairly dark, and then I do put some N4 to get some darker effects. I want this to be patchy. I want it to look like it's a, a weathered building that's not been particularly cared for or recently painted. And so these N4 marks now just kind of add some more definite staining. And I'm just putting some N3 over that N4 just to help it smudge and bleed in a little bit. So from memory, this is, this is N3 now on the side of the tower that's facing us. And my plan is then on the side of the tower that's that, at right angles to this, use one tone lighter. So that will be an N2. And then for the further tower, I'll again use a tone lighter to indicate it being further. So this is now N2. And then I would put N1 facing the other side. And then it's really looking back and forth. Where do I need to make adjustments? Always erring on the side of a tone that could be a bit light, a value that could be a bit light, because I can always come over with either another coat of the same tone or a darker one subsequently. But once it's on, we can't take it off. So now just making the choices for these furthest buildings down the street. Nothing's worse than when you pick up the red, the, the wrong pen. I've done that often enough. So now looking at these cars, there's quite high contrast in the cars. I, I use the three and the four and even the five. Um, and in fact, I use the six with a few strokes in the cars. They really do attract some very dark shadows. And of course, being in the foreground, being very close, we do want to use some really dark darks there because the darker darks come forward. And that's also why I use them in some of those uh, pedestrians because it does, even though they're small, help visually make them look as if they're close to us. I'm not using each pen for very long. I'm just getting a thought for where I might want to make an adjustment. I make that and then I see another adjustment. So I get another pen and I make that. Always giving the ink just those few seconds it needs to dry before we make a final decision. 
I don't think there's any white left in this scene, which is a bit unusual for me. I do like to leave some white. Um, of course, we do have the white of the sky, I suppose, which does take up quite a large part of our drawing. So now with uh, my N5, I'm doing some of the really dark adjustments, but I'm working hard to be fairly cautious with those because they can't be removed. Just putting some real dark darks on those pedestrians there, helping all these foreground things to feel closer than the buildings behind them. And that's looking like it could be it. I actually just adjust the line of the roof, which had been annoying me. I felt it just angled down slightly too much. So I take the opportunity for having it back on the work table to adjust it slightly. But I didn't notice that wobbly perspective angle on the lower section of that building on the left. And so somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes real time later, our building emerges. Now, is there anything else I want to do? This, this was a fairly, well, it was a fairly grimy old section of Paris when we were here some years ago. And I wanted to capture that, that dark, grimy feel in this corner where the sun didn't really penetrate very easily. Now, in looking at this, I'm just thinking that maybe these towers need a little bit more darkness to properly represent the values that we have here. So I choose what I hope is one value darker for all of the pens that I use to do these two towers because I want to just increase their tonal contrast with the rest of the scene but also with each other i still want to keep the relative difference between the sides of the one tower and the sides of the two towers and i do that except in one respect the very bottom section of the second tower i actually use n4 for so i make it as dark as on the closer tower as i've just done then and i really felt that that did work better. It just helped to anchor it more securely, visually, to the base of the, the, the building, to the, the church. And then that's pretty much it. And basically, I've increased the tonal values of each of these sides by one. And I think that has a more satisfactory visual grab. And I think reflects more accurately the tonal value of the local colour in our actual reference. So the last thing that remains is to remove the tape. And there we have it. What choices would you have made? G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. I hope you found this demonstration of applying the tone to this scene to get a fairly dark and grimy effect, interesting and helpful. But whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun and I'll see you next time.